Hi, everybody. It is July 4th. July 4th. Well, that used to mean something. I don't know what it means anymore. Anyway, Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia is not known for, all right, it's climate change, so it'll bring flooding in deserts. So the faint, um, I don't know if you heard it, I did, but the faint recording was talking about this disaster. More people displaced, more homes gone, flooded cars, as you saw. Iran, that's right, Saudi Arabia and Iran, flood zones, who knew? Edinburgh. So, is that because the, the, the rains were so intense there that, well, 
the drainage, it was all backed up and it's now spewing uh, outwards. Or was that a water main break? But the floods are, why does this keep coming up? The floods are uh, um, uh, due to rain, due to rain. You know, even when I now see this kind of flooding on streets, I don't know. I was looking into it, and I couldn't find anything else on Edinburgh. Um, I don't. You guys tell me. You in Scotland. Uh, is this the worst of it? I hope so. I hope so. So, <laughs> and you look at streets like this. Years ago, I would have looked at streets like this and gone, oh, my God. Now, it's like nothing. Well, it's something when it damages cars and homes. But I haven't found anything that suggests that that actually took place. So, I hope everybody is okay in Scotland. Jamaica. I mean, man. Media Road and Upper York Street. Watch the gully. Gully. Come over. Pull in. You're not here, brother. Look how long me are out of that. Go on, I'm going to have some gear, brother. Storm Elsa on Sunday brought heavier rainfall to Jamaica, flooding parts of the Caribbean island nation. The center of the storm is located near Jamaica, about 80 kilometers north of the capital, Kingston, in the direction of Cuba. Weather along the southern parts of the east coast of neighboring Cuba also began to deteriorate. The National Hurricane Center reported a maximum wind duration of about 100 kilometers per hour with stronger gusts. The storm brought heavy rain up to 40 centimeters to Jamaica, which flooded part of the country. The Jamaica Meteorological Office said a tropical storm is expected on the island on 4th of July, with heavy rains in most areas, as well as flash floods in lowlands and flood-prone areas. Some increase is possible tonight as Storm Elsa approaches the south-central coast of Cuba, the National Hurricane Center said in a statement. However, as early as Monday, when the storm crosses Cuba, a gradual mitigation is predicted. Tropical Storm Elsa is forecast to cross central and western Cuba by Monday and then head towards the west coast of Florida on Tuesday. So now it's the west coast of Florida. All right, I'm a little confused because what, where is it? Now, this is Jamaica, Cuba. Uh, what is this and what is this? Because, well, one would think it's a hurricane that has been, well, stitched together. You see all these nice fine lines, uh, defined lines. Well, I don't know um, what this is. Yeah, uh, well, it's manufactured, that's for sure. But Jamaica, is this Elsa? That looks a little weird. That looks very weird, but I guess it is. Oh, what's this string right here? Wow, it's going in a different direction than it should. Oh, wow, okay. Well, I think they're called nanobots. And this takes forever to load. Um, hmm, alrighty. Well, they're on a mission, that's for sure. If you don't know anything about <clears throat> nanotechnology and how they are using that uh, great advance, you know, the technological wizards, 
then you can look at my playlist weather modification um, and learn. So, no, something is very wrong here since you see the air mass going in a very different direction. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, so I guess this is Elsa. Or this. Well, it's kind of attached, all of it. Hmm. Not quite sure. Lo oh, wow. Look how nicely defined that cloud becomes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> Natural? Don't think so. Oh, well. And we have air masses going in all different directions. The west coast of Florida. Yep. Gotta love it. So, what's this blob out here? Hmm. Interesting. Well... First, I thought it might be Elsa, but, oh, well, wait a second. Where is, where are all these, man, it's hard to figure out all these different directions. All right, well, maybe they're pushing this back. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, well, that just disappears. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Hmm. Life sure is interesting. Look at this mess in our atmosphere. That's real sweet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Natural. And look. Look at all of this. The, the very faint, very faint what? One would call it haze, but it's awfully defined up here in Canada and what is this, Minnesota, and very defined. Well, the nature doesn't work in very defined uh, way. She works in a circular pattern, and this creation, um, well, Heading up northeast, but then you have this that is going southwest. This is coming down from Canada. This, I guess, an offshoot of this monstrosity. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, well, it appears to be circling about, but what do they have you in const? in you guys. In East Canada. Yep. Our lovely manufactured weather today by the weather terrorists. So, I don't know what's going on here, but doesn't look like, uh, you know, an Elsa to me. Not at all. But, hey. That's what we have to go on. Oh, by the way. Whoa. Nice. Extremely low frequency shot from Missoula, Montana. all that cloud will they fire up the nanobots will they discharge them will they send them on a mission a flooding mission or a tornado mission or whatever look at this so look at the air masses down here there's several okay you got these going out west these hanging out. This goes a little bit e uh, east, but then, you know, it's a bigger blob of, I guess, precipitation. It's insane. 
gives me a headache sometimes just looking at this. Nice, nice, extremely low frequencies for you guys down in Southern California, that's for sure. How are you feeling? I bet you're feeling great. How are you feeling, you guys in this area of Montana? Because all of this has biological effects. It has emotional effects. It has mental effects, spiritual effects. It has psychic effects, physical. Oh, yeah, well, okay. Mexico. After trying to cross with his car, an overpass located on the Boulevard Luis and Sinas and I.A. America's bridge in the San Benito area. Another victim was a young man who was electrocuted when his home in the Las Manitas area, in the southwest of the city, was flooded. According to the meteorological report, in Hermosillo, precipitation reached 99.4 millimeters, accumulated in the city center. Governor-elect Alfonso de Rosamond assured that the National Defense Secretary will do everything necessary to avoid new tragedies. For this purpose, tree felling, drainage, assistance to stuck vehicles and evacuation of people are carried out. Also, assistance will be provided to victims of the flood. Two people died in this flood, and one would think that it was a hurricane, uh, um, Elsa, right? No. The fires. The fires. Cyprus. Cyprus cannot tackle this massive and fast-spreading fire alone, and has now appealed for international help to prevent more loss of life and destruction of property. Strong winds after a week-long heat wave have created a toxic mix for firefighters working in the southern coastal region. Helicopters, dozens of fire engines and water tankers have been mobilized, with Greece, Italy and Israel offering help. British troops stationed in Cyprus are already involved in the effort. The blaze, which began on Saturday, has forced the evacuation of many homes. And search crews found the bodies of four people outside one fire-swept mountain village. The dead are believed to be Egyptian laborers, and plans are being made to repatriate their remains. Residents who lost their homes have vented their fury at the government, claiming the authorities were slow to respond to what officials have described as the worst forest fire in the history of Cyprus. A catastrophic blaze still burning, and one which police say could have been started deliberately. A 67-year-old man apparently started this Cyprus heat wave. Heat wave all over, huh? Well... Okay, Canada has more than 150 wildfires 
in Western Canada, BC. Military aircraft have been mobilized to help evacuate towns and fight more than 130 wildfires tearing across Western Canada. A record-setting heat wave has fueled the fires. Rescuers are now searching for missing people in Lytton, British Columbia. Roughly a thousand people fled the town, which was almost entirely wiped out. For many, it was a chaotic escape. With just minutes to spare, residents of Lytton escaped through thick smoke and ash. The fire front moved so quickly, they had almost no warning before their town was engulfed in flames. All right, so it looks like the fire went out over the mountain and it's about to get everyone that's stuck on that side of the mountain. Me and my dog just got out, but uh, we could see the house literally in fire as I was leaving. Um, I didn't even have time to lock the door. The blaze ignited a day after the town sweltered through almost 50 degrees Celsius, breaking Canada's temperature record. Emergency workers are searching for missing residents as the smouldering town remains unsafe to enter. Today our thoughts are mostly with uh, families that are grieving, that are uh, facing terrible loss, uh, but of course uh, we also have to reflect on the fact that extreme weather events are getting more frequent and climate change has a significant role to play in that. Okay. All right. Okay. I've, I've been doing this too long. I have nothing to say. This is just the way it's going. You know. God. The liars win, huh? The liars win. I hate it. I can't stand it. The unprecedented heat wave and wildfires have left the country reeling and worried this will become the new normal. Even if the world wasn't warm. Sorry, I didn't put my mic on. I just, I can't listen to this climate change crap. I can't, uh, did I have the mic on when I said that? Look, and I can't find information that I used to be able to find. And I, I can't just spend, you know, so much time digging and digging. So if anybody has any further information about these fires... Um, let me see, July 3rd, that was yesterday, hang on. I'm sorry, I screwed up. The July 3rd video was, I was, I obviously um, kept that up and, well, X'd out this one. This is the one that I wanted you to hear. But let's start here at home and the ongoing wildfire emergency in British Columbia, beginning with the images and stories that have been shared by residents. Our house is to the point of almost burning soon, so wish us luck. But the fire's been moving so fast that we just can't keep ahead of it so we're just praying that our cattle have made it out those, up, those ones have just gone the whole village is going is it 72 hours now but it seems like a month um since we since we got in the car and just drove literally for our lives there are currently more than 170 active wildfires burning across British Columbia, and firefighters are desperately working to contain them. So for the latest, let's go to Tanya Fletcher right now. She's in Vancouver. So Tanya, good to see you. Uh, what are we hearing from the BC Wildfire Service about firefighting operations today? 
Michael, we'll take you to uh, the BC Wildfire Service's latest tweet. They're on the ground in the Caribou region at the Decca Lake Wildfire. That's north of Kamloops, uh, kind of up near uh, between Williams Lake. So they say today fire personnel will be conducting a controlled burn operation using both helicopter and basically on the ground units for that Decca Lake Wildfire. I apologize. I just had an interruption. But this woman is talking about all of the fires and the places. So you guys up in British Columbia, uh, if you want further information, click on the link below to this video, which is titled, Two Confirmed Dead in Lytton as Wildfires Continue to Burn Across BC. But, you know, okay, first I heard there was 100 <laughs> wildfires then 150, 170, which is what this reporter said, this is today, and she said 22 evacuation, evacuation orders. 22 evacuation orders. Where those orders are, well, she didn't mention, which, you know, would have been helpful, but... Yep. Okay. Well, two people dead in Lytton, and they're still looking for survivors. Or there are people missing. California. So let's get back to those fires we're watching right now. Here's video of the Sugar Fire. This is burning in Plumas County. There is now an evacuation advisory in effect east of Madalena Road and Sugarloaf Mountain all the way to Goodwin Ranch. There is a 25% containment on this 470-acre fire. Also, the lava fire continuing to burn in Siskiyou County, and it's now up to more than 24,000 acres. Most of the evacuation orders are still in effect. And this weekend, authorities arrested 14 people for entering and refusing to leave the evacuation zone around the Mount Shasta Vista subdivision. If you're heading this way, Highway 97 is still closed between the city of Weed and the city of Doris. Fire officials say they have this blaze 39% contained. Now to the Salt Fire, which is burning in Shasta County, just north of Redding. It destroyed 27 homes and 18 buildings are damaged or destroyed as well. That fire is now burning more than 9,000 acres and it's 15% contained. Some residents who live in the Lakehead area could return home soon, but most of the evacuation orders remain in effect. Also, the Tenant Fire is another fire we're tracking for you this morning. More than 10,000 acres are burning, and it's 29% contained. The Lava Fire is burning in Siskiyou, or like the Lava Fire that's burning in Siskiyou County near Mount Shasta. An evacuation order that includes Round Valley is in effect in this area as well. So, I hope all of you are okay, you're safe. Uh, even that you had, you know, a good weekend. If you're celebrating the 4th, I hope that you uh, enjoyed that 16 cent savings that came about in your jo July 4th cookout. Oh, God. Our life. American life. It sure has changed. Ciao, guys.